Hey, what is up? What is going on? Ivan Ramkrishna here, and welcome to Driven to Draw, where we teach you how to bring your sketches to life. Let's get started. Today, we're going to be talking about rendering form, and this is really pretty key for some people, was how do you sort of uh, take an existing object, uh, such as the sketch that I got here, and start to, to sculpt it, uh, per se. So what I'm doing here is that I've, I've got a, an existing drawing, which I've scanned, and what I'm doing is that I'm going to use a software called Krita. It's a, a free software. Uh, which allows you to do a lot of digital painting and experimentation. Uh, it's actually probably one of the, the the better softwares that I've been working out there, and I, I'm really starting to love it. And what's really cool is that it's totally free. You don't have to spend any money or anything like that. So if you've got a Wacom tablet or any kind of uh, digital device, you can head on over to Krita.com and, and download it. So what I'm going to start uh, right now is to, I'm experimenting with some brushes and I just want to start to get like a base color. So the first step is to to get a brush and get a base color in through here. And I'm just going to scatter it all along the page. And what's nice about this is that it gives it sort of a, uh, a, a really nice painterly look because of the texture of the brushes that I'm using right now. Now I'm putting all this in a separate layer and just like in Photoshop where you can make the uh, layer settings into a multiply that's what I've done here in Krita. So I've got a, a multiply setting here and that just allows you to uh, see the underlying drawing through the layer. It's kind of like a transparent layer kind of think of it that way. Just gonna start adjusting my colors here get a little bit darker and what I want to do is that once I start to establish the the base form uh, I'm looking at the areas that are not necessarily lit so I'm gonna start to in some particular areas I'm just gonna start to use a darker value of the red and then I may just start to, to add that to the bottom side maybe the body side of the vehicle a little bit and I'm just going to uh, just go down the the value change uh, and just start to add more value darken things up because what I'm looking for is a contrast and that contrast for me to describe that form it's a very obviously a different way of painting because usually when I'm using a brush tool I'm just using the basic brush tool settings and I just color the entire vehicle in but that's not what I'm doing here I'm now starting off with more of an artistic brush just to sort of experiment so it's really about trying to experiment be a little bit creative also throughout your process alright so now that we got the base color established uh, the second step is to start adding a little bit of lighter tones and start to sculpt the form now, you know, the good thing is that I've already got my drawing, I've got my sections through there, and now I'm just trying to establish that light source. So, um, what I'm doing here is just kind of showing that uh, the light source is, is coming at a, at a diagonal from the right hand side, and it's hitting those particular spots that I've des designated in the arrows here. So, when I start to draw in my highlights and start to increase the uh, the contrast between the light and the dark some of those areas are what's going to get the highest concentration uh, for the light so now what I'm doing is I'm going to uh, start adding the lighter tones and notice that uh, when I'm doing this I'm not um, I'm not going with a, a lighter shade of the color what I'm doing is 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 actually choosing the colors carefully and just looking at the saturation of the colors in itself which kinda brings me to the next point is that when we start to to look at drawing cars that are like red or, or metallic paint uh, well what you're finding is that you're not just going to uh, look at just uh, a lighter tone of the base color uh, because that ends up looking a little bit flat but you start to look at temperature in itself. 
So temperature is kind of key because it's kind of like the hotness of a, of a particular color. So that's kind of what we're doing here now in step number three is to add the temperature. And to do that, I, I sort of just kind of look at if, if I'm drawing like an orange car, well, what happens is that when you get to the lighter tones or you get to the areas where you have your hot spots and your, your highest level of light, then you don't really go with white. What you end up doing is going through sort of like a range, of like, a, like a flame. If you think of a fire flame, you've got uh, all these several different tones that, that range from uh, you know, a darker orange color and then it starts to, to get a little bit yellow and uh, or orangish and then it gets to a, a lighter yellow color and that's kind of what I'm doing here so I'll end up sampling the colors and then I'll just start hitting these spots where I think uh, where I see where my light source is going to be touching this vehicle in those particular areas and I, there's a little bit of cheating also when I when I get here to the front uh, when you got the uh, the fog lamp area and that front fascia it's not necessary you're gonna hit in those spots but um, and obviously on the other side you're not going to get any light right because it's kind of turning away from from the Sun in that area and then um, and then I'm going to do the same thing with uh, just picking my color for the windshield so basically I got this orangish red car and then I'm going to get this tinted green uh, glass and then I'm going to do the same thing. So you see that I go with a, a darker green color and then I start to increase the saturation. I just kind of go up the chain um, into the higher levels of, of the green tones. And that kind of gives it that hot look. You're increasing that temperature. And it gives a much more dynamic look and it, and it really pops the drawing out quite a bit. Now, if I started my base color uh, as the lighter green, then I don't have much to work with. I might have to actually go to the yellow and the white area. So that's it. I'm going to finish up with some headlamps. I'm just going to color this thing in white. Give it a little bit of a sketch action technique here. And that's... Uh, it's pretty much done. So I hope there's several ways to approach this subject, by the way. And uh, hopefully this gave you a little bit of insight and uh, kept you a little engaged on what my approach is and how you can tackle it. We'll see you here next time on Driven to Draw. Have a good one.